preposition versus infinitive. What's the difference? Prepositional phrases. We've talked about as starting with a preposition. Prepositions are those little words that we memorized at the beginning of the year. You also have a cheat sheet on the first page of your grammar section in your interactive notebook. Um, prepositions are little words for the most part. They show locations or times of when things happen. After a preposition, you're allowed to have modifiers. And some of our modifiers are adjectives and adverbs, words that describe. The big thing to remember is that you are absolutely not allowed to have verbs. Notice my scary verb font. You are not allowed to have a verb in a prepositional phrase because if you do, that's going to lead you to a different type of um, phrase or clause. So you have preposition plus modifier plus a noun, and sometimes that could be a pronoun. But a noun is a person, place, thing, or idea. So for example, after is a preposition, after the football are my modifiers, and then game is a noun, it's a thing, after the football game. No verbs. So on your test over um, the quiz that you took last week or on Monday, um, you were asked to look for all the different prepositional phrases. So the first one here that you're going to find, over the long weekend, Mrs. Culleton decided to go snowboarding. Looking for one of the words that we memorized on our list of prepositions, and I see the word over. I'm looking for some modifiers and a noun at the end. Over what? Over the long weekend. Weekend is a noun, so that's my last, my uh, noun at the end, and then my modifiers in between. I do see another word that looks like a preposition, the word to. When I see to, I have to stop and think. Is it followed by a noun? Does it follow my formula? Or does it have an uh, a verb after it, which would make it an infinitive? So, uh, to go, I'm not allowed to have net verbs in my prepositional phrase, so that cannot be a prepositional, or a prepositional phrase. To ensure she did not embarrass herself in front of her students at Alpine Valley, she drove three hours to Mad River Mountain in Zanesville, Ohio. I see in, but I also see this in front of, and I remember that our last set of prepositions was actually a group of words. In front of what? In front of her students is a prepositional phrase. Oops. Her being the modifier, students is the noun at the end of the phrase. At is a preposition. At what? Alpine Valley. Alpine Valley is a proper noun. To, I have to decide is there a verb after it, a noun. Mad River Mountain is a noun, it's a place. So that's a prepositional phrase. And then there's one more in there, in, in Zanesfield, Ohio. Again, another uh, proper noun. Thankfully, the temperature was mild and the slopes were filled with fresh powder. Looking here for a preposition, I see with. With what? With fresh powder. Powder is the noun, and then I've got a modifier. What kind of powder? Fresh powder. It was the perfect day for her to learn rails. A lot of people put to learn as a prepositional phrase. Remember, learn is a verb, not allowed to have them. So there was one here. And it is for, for her. Mm. On the next sentence, on her first run, she fell and hit her head on an icy patch. See one right at the beginning, on, on her first run. This one might be a little bit tricky because run can be a verb, but it's not talking about the act of her running. It's talking about like a thing, a run, on her first run. Another on over here, on an icy patch. If she hadn't been wearing a helmet, she would have cracked her skull open. I had a lot of people label if as a preposition. It's not. It is on a list. It's one of our obubuses or subordinating conjunctions, but that does not allow us to have a prepositional phrase. So in this sentence, you shouldn't have had anything. After a long break, she tried again with her son. I see after, go to the noun, after what, after a long break, and then I see with, with what, with her son. In the end, she decided to stick to greens. I see in, so in the end. I 
I see to, to stick, and I know that stick is a verb, so that can't be a prepositional phrase. I see two green slopes, and I know that slopes is a noun. What kind of slopes? Green ones. Okay, so that's what your quiz should look like. If you did not do those, I would like for you to get your highlighter out right now and make sure you have all of the correct answers on your quiz. And then let's go on to infinitives. So what is an infinitive? An infinitive is two plus a verb. Yes, it does look like a preposition. We just talked about two. It's not because it's followed by a verb. Oops, that shouldn't be there. Okay, and so for a verb you're thinking, is it something that you can do? An action, to run, to play, to go, to be. So for your quiz, you were supposed to find the, prep, or the infinitives. So I see two here, and really all you had to do was go look for the twos. I see two plus the verb is to go. To ensure. To ensure means to make sure. She didn't embarrass herself. I see two here to Mad River Mountain, but again, that one is a noun, so that's uh, we already identified as a prepositional phrase. I can go over here to learn. To learn. And then there was one more, and that is to stick. To plus a verb, stick. So at your center, you should have a handout that looks like this. And what I would like for you to do is go through and highlight the prepositional phrases and put brackets around the infinitives. I'm not going to tell you how many there are of each. I want you to get your notebook out if you need to. Look up every single word in these preposition on your preposition list. Is Mac a preposition? Is Brazel? Is was? Is a? Is sheep? Because I expect you to be able to find every single one, especially since I'm letting you use your notes right now. Okay, when you're done with that, you're going to turn it in, and then you'll move on to your next center.